Hi there and welcome to my latest video. Today I'm going to talk to you about collage items and a lot of mistakes I made in this piece. I was having a lot of fun until I wasn't and that's often what can happen when you're making different kinds of art. So I started off by just putting down my normal collage pieces. I like to start this way so it kind of gets me free and loose, not worrying too much about where I'm putting things or what I'm putting down. These are some of my jelly prints that I made and I actually stamped a leaf on top in, I used um, an ink, a pigmented ink on top. And if you find any of this helpful, I would love if you'd subscribe to my channel. I have a lot of videos on how to make different kinds of art. So this is where I made one of my first mistakes with this. I put the collage piece down. It's the jelly print with the pigmented ink on top. And then I use a liquid gloss medium, it's fluid medium, to attach it, which is what I normally do. But as I put it on top as well to make the adhering work better, I actually smeared where the ink was. Now, because it was such a light uh, item, I didn't really care because I could just go over on top of it, print it again, another stamp, or put more papers over it, so it didn't bother me. So next, I was just trying to put some gesso down give it a little bit of a faded color because I don't like the papers to be so pronounced. When I'm doing collage, I like to kind of put them into the background after a while. And I just wanted to add a little foundational color to kind of bring the piece together. So I added a little raw umber and mixed it with the gesso. And one of my favorite things to do is to add just a little water so it has some drips and give it a little interesting look. We all have our things that we do repetitively and this is one of mine. I love adding drips. And then of course I try to blot it off because I've added too much, which is all part of the process. So then I'm just smearing in some color kind of blending it so it doesn't look quite so much like it's sitting on top of the piece, but blending into the background. And again, I'm using gesso because it's a very cheap and easy, and it also kind of gives a little bit heavier coverage than just plain white titanium. Now I'm bringing in a stamp. I'm sorry, I'm bringing in a stencil and I'm using one of the foam paintbrushes basically to kind of bounce it in there, which doesn't really always work so great. So I really need to get like a stamp paintbrush, one of the true bouncers, because when you see it pulled up here, it kind of bleeds under the stencil, which it can look okay, but sometimes I want it to be a real crisp stencil. So just repeating it up here, trying again. To be fair, these are pretty thin lines in between each item, so it can easily go underneath. So my next fail was technically, I recorded another piece of this video, my progress, and it got completely deleted. So that is just another mistake that can happen along the way. But here I am progressing on the piece and I'm using a Stabilo marker just to make some marks, you know, identify a little more of the stencils that I've used. Just kind of bringing attention to certain areas. And I love using Stabilos because it's just like writing with a acrylic paintbrush basically. And then I put down another piece of my jelly prints. And this was on a tan piece of deli paper. But again, I used that same white ink at the time. I didn't know it, it would bleed. So it kind of got faded. 
So just kind of identifying some things I want to draw attention to. And then my favorite part of this was going to be this envelope with the bird in it. And I put it down. I actually did use a fixative spray on it before I put it down so that it wouldn't bleed from the inkjet ink. And it just got so messy that it frustrated me and I just pulled it all up. <laughs> because when you put these papers down, whether it's tissue paper or deli paper, if you don't have the ink completely set, when you use the medium over on top of it, it smears it and makes it one big black blob or whatever color you print it in. So I took most of it off, the dark pieces anyway, just so I could kind of cover it up. It just looks so messy and not at all what I had envisioned. So I'm just putting some gesso on top of it. Kind of clearing the way for something else. And then I added one of my favorite pieces. Which is a bird. I'm really into doing kind of nature pieces. So I, I did put a fixative spray on top of this and it did seem to work to not make it so um, dark and messy when you use a little bit of medium on top of it. I just tried to do it underneath this one because I didn't want to get it to be too messy. So there's the bird. Seemed to work out pretty well. And then I decided the black was too heavy. And again, this is all a process. You know, you're always kind of figuring out what works, what doesn't work. My favorite way to do that is just to kind of walk away and then come back in a little bit and see what stands out to me. So this is my sentiment that I put down on jelly paper and just gluing that down. I didn't love how you could see that edge, but it happens. And then I'm just adding a little gesso to kind of blend it in. And then what happened when I finished this portion, I walked away for the rest of the day. Well, after I did these dots, but I walked away just to kind of give it a little rest because I think sometimes when I spend too much time on a piece, I tend to overwork it. And then when I come back, I, I'm like, what was I thinking? So I wanted to give myself a little rest from it. So then when I came back the next day, I wanted to extend this stamp a little further. I had a little bit more of the deli paper printed on it from the stamp. So then I just continued a little more with some other deli paper because that looked a little too dark for me down there and it took away from the bird. So I put a little piece of kind of print, print, pink printed paper on top. So you can still see the stencil underneath, but it gives it a little bit of a muted color. And just extending that on the end, the bottom. And then I go back in on the other side after this dry to give it the same lines and make it look like it's being pulled over to the side. And then this is another mistake I made with not letting it dry because on deli paper, a lot of times you really have to dry it with a hairdryer so that the ink doesn't kind of smear. So once that was completely dried, I went back in with the white gesso. I went slow at first just to see if it was going to smear again, but it seemed to work. So I kind of blended it in the same as the other side. Just kind of gave it a cohesive look. And 
Next, I wanted to give a little bit of a sprinkle of black, just a little small detail in that white space so it didn't look quite so blank. Just a few drops of black. And then I go in and edit a little bit because sometimes it gets to be a little too much. Just trying again, wiping it off, trying again till I like it. And then that was it. This is the finished piece. I probably or might go back in and do a few tiny little adjustments, but this is mostly how I left it. Um, I'm going to put a final picture at the end here so you can see what it looks like. And I hope that you enjoyed watching me today. And if you like this video, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. I appreciate your support. I'll see you next time.